What's up, Average Dad fans? Welcome back to another video. And it's this one. The one that all the comments have been asking for. So here it is. Now, before I get started on the review, I just want to say what an absolute pleasure it is to own and use and compare these two devices. Let's go. Now, by the end of this video, I'll be picking my favourite. Might be quite obvious at this point. And the one that I am not keeping is obviously for sale. You can buy it through me directly on Instagram. I won't bother popping it on the Average Dad tech store because it's just a personal sale between you and one lucky buyer. Now, I'm going to compare every element of these devices. However, a massive focus, and rightly so, is going to be on the cameras. So stay tuned for that because there are dozens and dozens of examples of where these two phones both absolutely shine. But as mentioned, first up, let's talk differences between the two devices on paper. Yesterday I made a video on the Honor Magic 6 Ultimate and questioned why it was called Ultimate because between that and the Pro variant, the only difference, and I mean this literally, the only difference is the LiDAR sensor that's been added to the Magic 6 Ultimate to help with autofocus, and it does help. But that's not enough of an upgrade to call one device a Pro and the other an Ultimate. And in the Vivo's case, is there enough of a difference to call the Ultra an actual Ultra? Because it's still only a triple camera setup. And for me, Ultra should be left for quad camera setups on the rear. However, the differences between the Pro and the Ultra are many more than I mentioned on the Honor. First up, the thing you look at all day every day, the display. It's moved from FHD Plus all the way up to Quad HD Plus. Yes, 1440 by 3220, an absolutely crystal clear, smooth, beautiful display. And here you can see both don't get me wrong, the X100 Pro is not a bad display by any means, but I can tell the slightly better resolution and sharpness on the X100 Ultra. And then there's the overall feel in the hand and dimensions. The X100 Ultra is slightly heavier, at about 229 grams compared to the 221 of the Pro. It's also... And I don't understand why on paper it doesn't say this. It looks like they're the same dimensions, but in the hand, and as you can see to look at, the X100 Ultra is wider, but any specs I see on GSM Arena don't appear to show that. But I can feel in my hand that the Ultra is a wider device, which I prefer much more like the S24 Ultra and the Oppo X7 Ultra. Now, the other differences about the devices is the chipset. It's the Dimensity 9300 on the X100 Pro. And in the Ultra, it gets the bump up to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip. It also gets a bump up in battery from 5,400 in the Pro to 5,500 in the Ultra. So the battery gain you get with that chipset paired with a slightly larger battery in the real world equates to about 40 minutes extra screen on time. By the way, a screen on time on the Pro that is already fantastic at over nine hours. So you're much closer to the 10 hours, if not sometimes over 10 hours with the Vivo X100 Ultra. Now the other big difference, that elephant in the room is obviously the cameras. The sensor has had an upgrade. The main sensor has gimbal stabilization. It's a Sony LYT900 sensor. It's a one inch type sensor. And then, of course, there's that periscope zoom lens. The largest periscope zoom lens ever on a smartphone at 1 over 1.2. And it's the highest megapixel count at 200 megapixels. And that's the key. Because as you're going to see a bit later in the video, the optical zoom is 3.7. Whereas on the X100 Pro, it's 4.3. So on paper... And at 4.3, optically, it is a better shot than the 3.7 cropped up to 4.3. However, that is the only scenario where zoom-wise, 
the Protex Any wins. Because that 200 megapixel massive sensor produces the best, and I mean this quite literally, the best zoom shots on any device ever created, hands down, no debate. But we'll show you those pictures later. Another aspect that is slightly different on the Ultra, and again I think this harps back to the fact that I do believe that it's a slightly wider and thicker device, is the speaker quality. I'll let you hear in a second, but I'm just going to tell you now, the Ultra speakers sound a lot better than the Pros. And software-wise, this is the big difference, only because I have the global version of the Pro. If you were buying the Chinese version, this section wouldn't be a difference. They would both have Origin OS fully up to date. I believe it's Origin OS 4, and they'd both run exact same. However, the global one I have is running FunTouch OS. And there are some differences when it comes to the settings menu, the wallpapers you have access to, the widgets you have access to. And I've mentioned before, and I'll say it again, I prefer Origin OS over FunTouch OS. However, with the global X100 Pro that I have, that might be the phone that's for sale after this video, you're going to get Android Auto, you're going to get smartwatch connectivity. It's a global ROM, folks. Not even flashed, it's an official global ROM, so everything works fine. But FYI, if it was a Flash Global ROM, that, that would still be fine. Everything still works, Android Auto and all that stuff. So obviously on Ultra, it's a Chinese version. Everything works. Google Pay, Google Maps, Google Location Services, banking apps. Everything works perfectly apart from Android Auto and Wear OS 4 smartwatch compatibility. But now the moment you've definitely been waiting for. So how I'm going to split this camera section up is I am just going to let you judge for yourself for a while. I'm going to show you side by side photos and videos. They're all watermarked with what device took which for ease. And then just let me know in the comments what you think. What do you think gives the better zoom shots, the better video? I'm going to show you how the selfie video looks and sounds with the microphones, which I do believe are better on the Ultra, but you can let me know what you think. And then I've got a few select shots. I want to show you the reasoning why I think one of the phones has a better camera setup. It's the Ultra. I, mean, I believe the Ultra has a better camera setup, but I want you to see for yourself. So, without further ado, here you go. Still remember how you sound And the way you calm me down When we went behind the bar Taking what we thought was ours I was wasted, it was late But I knew I met my fate You were all I've waited for Cause I can wait a little more Yeah, yeah It was just one of those nights When it's better than in all the movies Perfectly aligned I fell into you and you into me Just one of those nights When you wake up after thinking it's a dream That was just a memory
So, here we are. The Vivo X1 Ultra 4K at 60 but how do the mic sound? The image looks good. But how are the mics on the X100? And then the Vivo X100 Pro. 4K, 60 frames per second. It didn't come like that six months ago when I first reviewed it. It was 1080p. I'll never understand why, but I should be happy. It's 4K, 60 frames per second on the Celtic Man review as well. And what do we think? Are the mics better or worse? Between you and I, I'm not sure much change between the microphone hardware, but you tell me. Now to be clear regarding these phones, I made a video a few days ago about the X100 Pro having the best camera setup on any smartphone ever and I made that video deliberately before I received the X100 Ultra because my inclinations were right. The X100 Ultra has now taken top spot which means the Pro is second. So to be clear, if you own either of those phones, congratulations, you own the number one or number two best camera phone in the world. I will debate anyone regarding that. And then finally, let's talk about the difference in price. The X100 Ultra is £970 for the half terabyte version. The global version of the X100 Pro you can get for about £860 on Wanda, I believe. However, I've used mine and I want to sell it quick and I'm not keeping it because I love my X100 Ultra. I don't think it's any surprise to know that that's my winner today. It's not only my winner today, it's my number one favourite smartphone ever. And I include foldables in that. It's not to say that I don't love foldables because the X Fold 3 is my favourite foldable of all time but vivo are just killing the game that's foldables and candy bar phones now my only regret is that the rest of the world doesn't know about them they should be selling numbers like iphones in my opinion because the value for money as mentioned 970 pound for the half terabyte 16 gigabyte of ram version that's 300 pounds 400 pounds cheaper than the equivalent storage iPhone or Samsung Ultra. Just mind blowing. So if you're looking for the Vivo X100 Global, first come first serve, message me on Instagram, 725 pounds. I'll ship it on Monday. It's yours. And you're getting maybe the second best phone ever. So hopefully you've enjoyed this comparison. Hopefully it's given you all the information you need. And again, to reiterate, if you own the Pro, you don't need to upgrade. Unless you can sell your Pro for a good price and it doesn't cost you too much more to get the Ultra, then keep your Pro. So if you've enjoyed this comparison, smash like. I know you're starved of it when you search for them. In the European or UK or US market, there's not many reviewers doing it, so you're kind of stuck with me. But I do appreciate you coming along for the journey. And if you're looking for a new phone, it doesn't have to be a Vivo, it could be any Chinese ROM phone, do me a favour and check out the Average Dad Tech Store. We've had over 10,000 visits to the site now. So thank you very much. Many, many, many orders placed and delivered to happy customers. Thank you very much for the reviews as well, everyone. It really means a lot. And until next time.